The Drake line of ships is nothing like the Origin series, like the 890 Jump. There are no smooth lines here, only hard edges and exposed bulkheads. But then, it really doesn't need smooth lines, because it's built to get the job done. And so whether you have to pull a 15G hard burn, or you're just flying cargo from Port Alisar to Hurston, it's gonna get you there. Hey guys, I'm Morphologist, and in this episode of An Architect Reviews, we're taking a look at the Cutlass Black, my personal favorite multi-care ship in Star Citizen. As always, I'll be utilizing my professional skills in the field of architecture to take a look at the design of this ship. It's a bit of a unique design in this case, because it's not really designed for beauty. It's purely utilitarian. But there is a design to it, an aesthetic, so it were, and thus a design language is present. And so we're going to evaluate it based on that design language, as well as its organizational strategy on the interior. But since it's a small ship, I'll also be adding in a bit of my own thoughts on how it feels to fly, and how well it performs all the jobs you can currently do in the game. And if you stay tuned until the end, I've added in some footage of me playing with you guys in the community over on my Twitch channel, which I stream on every Saturday at 9am Eastern Time. So I hope you join me on this journey as we explore this next ship in my Architect Review series. Favored by militias, freelancers, and pirates, the Cutlass Black is the most common multi-crew ship you'll find in the verse. That's because it's the most versatile. With up to three crew members and an additional six jump seats in the back for, say, a strike team, it can perform a variety of roles, from standard shipping to a single seat fighter, all the way up to dropping people down onto a target to take it out. While there certainly is creative flair in the Drake lineup, everything from the Dragonfly all the way up to the yet-to-be-released Kraken is very much form-following function. And the design language really does reflect that. So let's begin on the exterior and then work our way onto the interior when we're examining this design. I think the design can be summed up nicely in a few words. It's muscular, yet light-feeling, and stable. And I think it achieves this in several ways. The engines in the back give it a very muscular and fast look. They're definitely oversized relative to the chassis, but the forward part of the ship with these winglets helps balance the design by giving it both visual and actual real-world weight. Visual lightness is achieved through several different methods. Namely, the connection points to the engine and winglets are quite thin relative to the body, giving it that sense of lightness. But also, just like on the 890 Jump, layering here is employed a lot. A lot of the internal components are exposed, which also expose the thinness of the material that wraps the exterior of the ship. This also helps sell its utilitarian nature. Drake is supposed to appear to be a very efficient, basic design that can just get the job done, and this is how it's doing it. Those big engines are also, I think, very purposeful. Not only does it help it go really fast, but it also gives it the capability to fly an atmosphere efficiently. Because of the size of the engines, when they go into VTOL mode, it can burn less fuel and thus be cheaper to operate in a variety of different theaters of operation. And just look at these exposed engine cowlings and how they really express power and speed, just through showing these internal components. I bet that even without me telling you guys all of these details, you already had the feeling that this ship looked fast and powerful even without ever flying it. And I think that's what makes this design so incredibly successful on the outside. But what about the interior? The interior is also consistent with this design language, exposing things like girders, insulation, and conduit pretty much everywhere on the ship. To say that this ship is unrefined would be an understatement, but I think that's in a way the beauty of it. Certainly, the upper crust wouldn't find it a very comfortable place to stay for very long, but for those of us who enjoy the mechanicals and inner workings of things, I think this has its own small beauty to it. From a very practical standpoint, if you would imagine yourself living in the universe of Star Citizen and having your own ship, it probably would be a lot more cost-effective to own a ship that you could access the mechanicals to easily. That way, if you needed to replace or repair something on the fly, you could do it without having to stop at a station. Ships like from the Origins series, or even from MISC, 
are going to have a lot of panels covering up all of these things, and so trying to actually access those well out in the field would be somewhat difficult. This is probably why the Cutlass is so popular with pirates, considering you can just rip out the bad components right away without any fuss. I also very much like how they've integrated these seats into the back here so that they can be folded up when they're not in use. Also notice that there's this color scheme of black and orange, which definitely gives it a much more industrial feel. It very much reminds me of the construction vehicle manufacturer in the real world, Cat. Throughout the ship, this color scheme is kept. Even the lighting has a bit of an orangish yellowish hue to it, which I think gives it an additional level of consistency. The level of attention to detail too with the structure here and the layering of different things like ventilation, insulation, lighting, and what have you, gives it a sense of depth that it would not otherwise have. The designer, Josh Coons, paid special attention to expressing structure everywhere, from the doors to the stairs, and even to the materials that make up these components to give them a much more mechanical feel. Even though the Drake ships are light, they do look like they can take a beating very much like the cat vehicles in the real world. Also, it looks like he had a bit of a sense of humor. This says, caution, this machine has no brain, use your own, which I think really does speak to the Drake brand quite well. It's not gonna hold your hand. There are no AI bells and whistles or electronic assists that are gonna make your job easier. So it's only as good as you are. And so if you're a pretty talented pilot, the Drake Cutlass Black is gonna make you shine. Just forward to the cargo bay through an off-axis hatch, you'll find the living section of the Cutlass Black. It has two beds that can comfortably suit people for probably a few days, but seeing as how there's no place to store food or even a toilet on board that I've been able to find, it probably is not going to be too comfortable. The cabin also has a gun rack that can equip up to four different weapons, which can come in handy if you need it quickly to stop borders or to jump out to do a mission. Design-wise, it's consistent visually with the rear section. There are some strange bits to it, though. The cabin feels somewhat unresolved. I think that comes down to the fact that it's triangular in shape and makes placement of things quite awkward. Exacerbating this issue is likely the size of the space. It's just not big enough to add an additional room or partition in the center of it, and so you're kind of left with this very weird open space in the middle where there's not much for you to do can't be used to store cargo, there's no table, and that leads me to guess that Josh probably struggled for some time trying to figure this space out. But I think there's a solution here that's already been found on the Vanguard series of ships. The Vanguard's not a new ship, but it was reworked recently in 3.6. With that rework, we got a completely different interior, which was a bit more well thought out and better utilized the space. One of the things I particularly like about this ship is that it does have a top turret just like the Cutlass. However, what it does to save space is make the mechanism hit in the ceiling and drop down on command. This makes it so that the cabin area has plenty of space for other things. In the case of the hoplite, you've got jump seats for the marines who are going to be dropping out of this ship. In other versions though, they contain the bathroom, the kitchen, as well as the beds. I think this space saving technique could have been used in the Cutlass Black. Instead of having the seat permanently affixed on the ground until it's used, have that as the opening to this space, and then you can locate a small kitchenette or toilet where the door currently is. I think this would also eliminate a bit of the visual clutter with that exposed seat for the turret. In the center of the room, there could be a table that's permanently affixed or one that folds away, such as in the Constellation. Other minor adjustments might have included making it so that the beds would be perpendicular to the outside wall, as opposed to the center bulkhead that separates the cargo area, which might help release a bit of visual tension with the space because of the sharp corners and the edges of the triangle. In order to better illustrate what I mean by the changes, I've put together a small model based off of the drawings we have online of the Cutlass. Now, the drawings I found weren't really scaled very well, so the interior I found was a little bit off, but this is purely white boxing here, which means that there are no details. It's just an idea of how to organize space. Proportionally though, in terms of the angles of this room, this is, well, it should be correct if the plans are to be believed. But as I said, the scale was a little bit off. I apologize for how sloppy it is. I would do a better job if I had a bit more time, but things like this tend to take a lot of time. And if I don't control myself, I could probably spend an entire day detailing this. 
for no reason whatsoever. I mean, it's never going to be used, it's just for your entertainment. But you can see here, I put in some beds integrated into the wall. They're now angled perpendicular to the exterior wall of the ship. I have a bit of a kitchenette, a small place to use a bathroom, and a pop-up table that could be folded away into the floor. And that gives you a lot more space if you need it, but then you have a way to use that center space when, when you need it. <laughs> so if you want to have a bite to eat. And then the entrance is, of course, through the turret now, just like in the Vanguard. And I think this would be a much better arranged space and feel a little bit more comfortable. At least that's my opinion. You guys are free to express your own feelings down below. Now, I know it might be hard to imagine it, but if you can just squint your eyes and, and think of the details in the design that I just showed you with all of this design language, I, I think it would look quite good. But overall, the interior of the existing cabin is still pretty awesome. I absolutely love how they're always looking at how to panelize things and make it look like it could be put together in the real world. The attention to detail and weight is also here in the cockpit, where avionics are exposed and the inner workings of our flight seats are also laid out for us to see. These chairs are actually on rails and when you sit on them, it raises them up into the canopy so you get a better view out onto the world. I think this design strategy is pretty clever because it allows you to be able to access these chairs but at the same time get a decent view outside when they're in use. Now there is one weird thing in that it's directly attached. If the canopy were to be blown out and somebody was resting, undoubtedly they would die. But hey, maybe Drake wants you to feel like you're always living on the edge. <laughs> I don't know. Overall, I think that the interior is really consistent with its design language and with its color scheme. Everything feels like it fits together and it's all part of the same manufacturer. I'm really looking forward to seeing how they do this in the Kraken, as this was the latest ship that they created in their Drake lineup. I think it would also be nice to take a look at this as compared to the Caterpillar and see what is transferred over, but I don't own one, so we'll have to set something up like that in the future. The design of the Cutlass Black, then, is very successful, but it's not just about the way it looks. Good design should also consider its use, and the Cutlass Black is incredibly useful. It can fulfill pretty much any role we currently have in Star Citizen. Whether you're a solo pilot, or you've got a big crew with you, it can do it all. In fact, last night streaming with the community, we got 12 people in the back of this thing. We're able to also fit in things like a dragonfly and a cyclone and get jobs done. It's not beautiful in the traditional sense, but if you like living out on the rim and being a little bit of an outlaw, well, this ship is probably going to be perfect for you. So I hope you enjoyed this switching up of the format just a little bit, and if you want to be part of the next video, all you have to do is go follow me on Twitch and also join the Discord down below and become part of the community today. Also, if you're finally ready to take the plunge into Star Citizen, don't forget to use my referral code down below in the description of the video to get 5,000 extra starting AUEC, and it helps me and my organization, and if you join it, you get a javelin. I've been Morphologist, and I hope to see you guys next time.